Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Understanding Politics. It's Wednesday here with Professor Hamid Minyora. Professor, how are you doing? Oh, um, great. Fine. How's the weather for you? Well, good. Fluctuating a bit. Fluctuating a bit, but okay. Subscribers still increasing. We are obviously grateful. Joining members that are joining the community, also those who are sharing our videos. I've realized a lot of people are sharing right now. Because Which is very good. And we are doing well. We must have this conversation together with all Kenyans. Okay, today we'll be speaking about uh, CS Matiangi, who was summoned in Parliament earlier today about DP Ruto's security. Also, we'll be taking a look at some of the things Professor mentioned in his analysis over last week, where he spoke about uh, Ruto's list of lies but that's when we come back we take a look at your comments <music> prof here is john Moradi. he said you are simply amplifying the lie we know politics is a game of lies and deceit whoever wins must have lied best is this a justification <laughs> for ruto's list of lies no list of lies was about character and about honor and about being a principled person Mm. and about breaking with the past. Mm. If you are associated yourself with certain things that were not very good, like lies, you can make a break from that and start a new thing, you know? It's not just listing the lies. So, so how about the people who say politics is, is, a, is a matter of lies, we cannot judge people's character? Well, even getting a girl, people say you must lie, but how true is that? No, it's mm. really, it depends on what you define as a lie. Mm. Yeah. Okay, um, Caroline Juma Prof, I hope you read comments. The saddest part is Ruto knows his audience and they have believed him from the first lie and will continue believing him. You and I and many others are watching uh, your analysis uh, as he's continuing yeah. to speak. Now, he's saying people will believe and that's it for him. But did she... Waswaili uh, wanasema njia mwongo ni fupi. At the opportune moment, Lies will always be lies, mm. and people will see lies for what they are. Oh. At some point, it, it can't be all the way. Mm. At some point, people begin to see these lies, you know, and they also they associate you with certain things. Okay. You know, politics is getting hot. I'm actually my advice is to Ruto, because you can, you can, I think he's getting away with these lies, mm. but his competitors are also going to capitalize on that. On the lies. Yes, yes, yes. Like, look at this thing of the state of the security and so on and so forth. Mm. Yeah. Okay, Claire Ndingole, asking the vice president to quit now is insincere. If he does, everybody behind him must, because he, he was elevated by Kenyans of all walks of life, continuing to speak about resignation, saying now that if he resigns, does that mean the UDA members too should resign? If they wish to. Actually, I've already argued they should. Mm. If you are not in Jubilee, you are elected in Jubilee, now you are in UDA, the best thing to do is just to quit oh. Jubilee and quit your position, go and seek re-election. Mm. That's a natural thing to do, is what happens if somebody is, is a man of honor. Do you think the DP's character is now in, questions, uh, in question in people's minds, his character? It could get there. Uh, there's a critical mass you need to reach. It is in a, a number of people already questioning. Mm. But as we, the, the elections near, there's going to be a significant number of people who doubt his word. Oh. And that will be disastrous to him. Uh, Miss MJ, Miss J says, I had a conversation with a young man born in the 90s. The young man was clueless about Ruto CV and second liberators like Baba, also the making of the 2010 constitution. Glad I got him through the facts. If you notice, it is the millennials following Ruto. It, do you think there will be a split in generation when it comes to casting votes next year? Yes and no. I think the generational change is with us. Uh, between 2022 and 2027, something major generational is going to happen. Oh. Uh, I don't see it happening at the level of voting 2022. But between 2022 and 2027, uh, a lot of the current politicians, irrespective of their age, will be faced out by a new generation that will come with new thinking. Oh. A very revolutionary way of looking at the world. Because between 2022 and 2027, the world is going to be so different mm. that very few of us currently occupying space will even have a footing. Oh. Yeah. So there's going to be a change, but not, not fast enough to impact on the 2022 elections. But this generation change will not relate with most of the leaders that fought for liber uh, liberation. They will the be 90s, swept. Whether you are in the Raila category, age-wise, and what have you, 
those of us who are now in the in the public space, mm. after next year we will have no space. Okay, uh, yeah. this is James. Whether we are politicians or oh. public intellectuals or people in the media, anybody associated with this current crop of leadership, Raila, Kalonzo, Mdavadi, Ruto, mm. those first of all who do not make it next year, will disappear completely. They will never, ever be heard again in it, Kenyan politics. This is why you say 2022 elections yeah, is critical. It's critical, yeah. Paul. But now in terms of generation change, mm. that sweeps across the entire population, mm. this will be between 2022 and 2027. Mm. So that by 2027, mm. if you look at Kenya, it will be a very different place. Different leaders. Oh, very different. And, and that, that is, is meant to happen. That will happen. Because it will happen. No, it's, it's, Time for generation change. Okay. James yeah. Carrera says, please try to ventilate us on white lies of Rao. Kenyans are as gullible as always. We will buy Rao's fat lies too. It's a common market for everyone. You've said sometimes, you've always been saying that Raila is, is a little bit more uh, democratic. M might you call him also a, a liar when it comes to playing politics? You know, I don't need to speak for Raila because people say I speak for Raila. I don't need to speak for him. But Raila's history speaks for itself. Mm. Surely. Unless you are ignorant and you are, maybe you are just a kid. Yeah. Raila's history is there for all to see. Mm. Yeah. Uh, you know what needs to speak for Raila? Including some... He stands for something. Some mentions of corruption. He like, stands uh, for something. But, you know, mentions... Uh, there have been mentions, but uh, they have not deserved merit. Mm. If, if from what I see. Mm. I have not, I'm yet to see one that deserves merit. But people would still say the same for Ruto uh, when it comes to lies, uh, when it comes to development. You, the, the merit should, the, 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 the lies should be taken to the, to the president and not to him because he's the one that has failed to... You know, there are certain things things. about uh, somebody like Ruto, they are, they are really personal. I don't want to get into that, but there are things that affect him as a person mm. that have landed him in court, mm. that have found him guilty, and others are still in the air. Oh. So, you can't say that about Raila. Oh. No, you... But of course, in Kenya, there will always be issues about people. Okay. Uh, but but uh, uh, I, I don't think you can associate Raila with lies. Okay, Patrick no. John says, Hustlers will surprise dynasties and so-called deep state and system come 2022. Uh, right now, the hustler narrative is a little bit dimin diminishing. Uh, do you see it getting back and surprising the nation? You know, Ruto is capable of uh, very serious things. Because this I've said so many times, I don't want to repeat. Ruto is a very sharp politician. Mm -hmm. Very intelligent. Okay. And they can come up, just like Raila comes up with things to surprise people. Ruto, Ruto is a match for Raila. Okay. So I do not rule out, now that the hustler thing has collapsed, the bottoms up thing is about to collapse, I don't rule out that he can come up with something else. Oh. He could as well come up with something they, else. There's still time. Yeah, there's still time. James Maniki, luckily, Gruto goes to church and I'm sure he confesses his sins of omission and commission and God is forgiving enough. Every time he asks for, give, for forgiveness, we can't argue with that, but uh, can people really forgive? Yeah, people. First of all, the beauty, if you make mistakes in this country, the only good thing that you can fall to is that Kenyans forget what happened yesterday. Oh. They forget. And there was this British High Commissioner, Edward Clay. He says, Jenna, Kenyans suffer from selective amnesia. We mm. forget. Mm. Somebody can do something, you think this guy will never recover. Mm. Six months later, everybody has forgotten. Is it because Kenyans are, as you say, forgetful, or is that the other sides do play good politics and they know? No, there are many things. For example, we have become an episodic mm. uh, society from the media perspective. Something comes, the media follows it. The moment something else comes, they are they, they, they follow the new. So, like episode. Oh. So that makes people forget. Oh. They never stay long enough with something like international media oh. until they chase it to the logical conclusion. Oh. Something else comes, we forget them. So, you, so, so you'd blame it a little bit on the media? Because media, of yeah. Media, our media is weak. We don't have a strong media. Following keenly. Yeah, yeah. They don't follow things to their logical conclusion. Oh. When something comes, they grab it. When they're trying to pursue it, something better comes, they forget this one, abandon it, and grab another one. Oh. And time goes. So people... And again, you see, we are a country where we don't, we don't have values. Children don't grow up knowing the meaning of values. Mm. You are a person living in Kilelesho, Lavington, mm. and all your neighbors are thieves, drug addicts, con men. No. So there's, not, there's no inspiration for our children as they grow up. Mm. So that means that we live in a society where values are not anything. Mm. 
Mm. For that reason, if you say somebody has stolen, it's of no consequence to Kenyans. Oh. You and, get what I'm saying? That's why this story And it's not, you see, for example, like in America, you find mm. sex scandals mm. in the UK. If you went to Italy or France, people laugh. What is that now? Mm. They can't even understand oh. that a man was found with a girl. What, what, what's the big deal? It's so not. equally for us now here, there are societies where if somebody was found in a certain scandal to do with money, stealing, they will, in, in Japan, you kill yourself. Oh. If you are caught up in a scandal of corruption, corruption you kill yourself. You see? We're here we used to. Yeah, be. for honor. Because you have brought dishonor to your family and to your friends. So you commit suicide. Mm. In Kenya, people laugh. Mm. Stealing is normal. Mm. So the, and that also makes people not even, make people forget about those things. Oh. They, they, they're and, normal and things. And that's why the lies don't count. They don't count. Nothing counts. Okay. When we come back, let's talk about um, the talk. We're talking about Interior CS uh, Fred Matiangi, who appeared before the National Assembly and uh, made some revelations about DP's security detail and some of the places where the Deputy President uh, security has been commissioned to. This has cost quite a start. The changes to Deputy President William Ruto's security detail has caused quite a stir in the country today after CS Fred Matiangi appeared before the National Assembly. 257 is the number of security officers that have been deployed to the Deputy President. Pr Professor, this is a number that hasn't been seen by uh, for anyone who has held that office since independence. And now people are asking, who is this guy that has to be protected by all this number of people? And uh, what do you think about it? Was it an audit by the CS uh, coming out in public and mentioning the properties that he is guarding on behalf of the Deputy President? What did you make of all this? You see, I don't know for sure. Even what other DPs uh, or Vice President have mm -hmm. had, mm -hmm. apart from the numbers being bundled he, he's around. He's bundling 22 for yeah, some. Yeah, so I, I have no facts. Oh. Uh, but neither is it even important. I think the point that is being made here mm. is People are trying to make too much out of the changes at Karen. Mm. So I think Matiang is out to show really these people are not being fair to anybody, mm. not even to themselves. Don't you think this was a plot to audit the DP in public and keep mentioning the, the, the assets that he owns? That's why I've told uh, s some of my friends when we discuss. On the face of it, and I think we even mentioned a discussion with you sometimes back. Mm. On the face of it, mm. if you look at the, the so-called replacement, which people are calling withdrawal, first of all, it was not withdrawal. People say it was withdrawal. But let's look at the replacement. On the face of it, you look like the government has made a mistake. It's actually a blunder, bungled. Yeah. That's what everybody would say. But don't you think some of these guys are also intelligent? Mm. They could have something they are trying to test or to show. So if it is... What we are seeing is anything to go by. It could be by design. By, by testing what? what yes, what to, show, to show now. Look at this guy here. Look at what he is. Mm. He's lying to you. He's a hustler. But look at this. Look at this. And look at how much the government is doing for him. So more so destroying his hustler nature yes, and yes, perception. Yes, yes. To because uh, you can see on social media, oh. people are saying, look, he gives you this. This is what he has. This is what, you know, that kind of thing. Choppers in Wilson. Yes, yes, yes. But isn't, isn't this wrong? Yeah, now talking of. A hanger, a hanger for your information, for those who may not know, uh -huh. is where planes are, are kind of packed. Yeah. The parking, you know, like a garage, a parking for, for planes. Plane. Yeah. So there's a hanger there or two being guarded by security. What is inside the hanger? Five choppers belonging to the deputy president. The hustler. So those kind of things are now coming out. Would you say this is wrong for the CS to come out in public and mention this? But you are the ones who make your nuki. Because they did a simple routine thing mm. and you didn't see it could be a trap. And you fail for it. Oh. You are trying to show you are being victimized and so on and so forth. So, so, so this is why the deputy president didn't want it to go on parliament? Would you it's say? possible he that he realized this? too late ah. that this thing will, will unearth who I am. Oh. It will uncover the things I have, mm. the kind of person I am. Mm. So he tried to stop it, oh. but it was too late. What, what political impact would you say would make on him and also the government? It, initially, it was the government has bungled this thing. The government doesn't have advisors. Mm. We all said that. Mm. But now when you look at it, the government seems to have been smarter than us. Plotting all this. Yes, plotting all this. So you see, so it goes to the guy having five helicopters. Mm. And the government is even good enough to guard them for him. Mm. The, government have, the guy having all these 
tracts of land across the country. Yeah. From like Kipia to Taveta and hotels, Mombasa, here. Uh, and they're even being guarded by government. Oh. You know, what kind of person are you coming out? No, you see, I've seen another list of what Kenyatta owns. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's besides the point. The point is you, you are presenting yourself as a hustler. hustler. Kenyatta didn't. And you are saying, no. the few years you have been around in this world, without some background in business and in employment, you are now a trillionaire or a billionaire many times over. You all know this. So it's a narrative that you must be careful if but you are Ruto. can't it have worked to his advantage too? Because they haven't mentioned, he hasn't mentioned some of the things that have been uh, claimed to be DPs, like the, was it the 680 Hotel yes. and some other big, big places. that. Some they of those things were not necessarily true. You know, even today I'm learning Dolphin was part of it. I knew Dolphin and 680 were jokes. Oh. But now I'm seeing Dolphin is there. So it, yeah, it so could be true. It could be true. It might yeah. not be true. Then and again, you can't... Uh, you can't know every, what, everybody, what somebody owns in, in totality. There are some things that are in your wife's name, your sister's name, oh, yeah, your yeah. girlfriend's name, mm. your brother's <laughs> name, you know, your business partner. Yeah. You know, this is, people are becoming clever. So what, what would you say the DP should do after this big, this is quite a big expose. On For it. the DP, I only have advice. And I think now I should send, I begin asking him to pay me because he should be smart enough mm. not to react to things when they happen. Some of them are, are traps. When something happens, take time. Don't oh. react immediately. Oh. When they withdraw your security, just hush it up. Mm. Just behave normal. Uh, as if as you happen. find out what could be the game. Oh. But you see now he's getting increasingly uh, to be a person who reacts instantly. Mm. So if there's a trap set for you, you fall into the trap. Mm. So my advice to him is uh, D.P. William Ruto should uh, really... Be careful in responding to things. Okay, Junette Mohammed said, this is immoral to give one person 257 when the people in his constituency, about 3,300 people, have uh, 80 police officers. Uh, what would you say this is going to impact on Kenyans in general? Kenyans looking at these numbers, looking at their estates, looking at the posh way of living the DP is having and the choppers. What would you say is going to impact on his supporters? Of course now, the, the, going forward, the people are going to come up with a narrative of, this man is talking about... Hustle. Look at what he has. You may dismiss it, but it will, have, it will, it will be a selling point mm. to some extent. Now, the question of how much security he has mm. is a general Kenyan problem. Mm. I have, one day I was on a, on a TV show mm. with some of my, with other panelists. Mm. I think all of them were members of parliament, if not all. Mm. One of them, my very good friend, he passed on God rest his soul in time of peace. He was very offended when I said, I don't understand why MPs are given security. This are, now you get somebody as ordinary as Manyora today. I go to parliament tomorrow. Now you give me two Ascaris. What for? Ascaris are supposed to, give, to be given on a need to basis. No. We assess somebody. Mm. We say now this man may be an MP, he may be a teacher like Manyora, but considering these and these factors, he deserves security. Oh. We just give. Mm. And I, I, on that show, I remember saying, uh, that I was shocked to find somebody who was, I think, a deputy chief whip, a deputy minority whip or something. He was being driven by GK, being brought by GK to the studio. Oh. That's it now. And the scaries. How? So it's not just Ruto. Oh. It is the way we use our scaries to guard useless fellows. I'm sorry to call them useless. Mm. But they're just useless people. Can this blame be shifted to, to the government, to Matiangi, for giving DP all this security? It's not Matiangi. Matiangi no. found this thing in place. Oh. APs. I used to work with my, when I was a young man, with my MPs. They never had anybody. Mm. I don't know where we go, this stupidity. Mm. All of a sudden, very useless people are given two, three mm. Ascaris, drivers. Mm. An MP does not deserve any of those things. Oh. None, not a driver, not a security man, not a PA. They don't deserve anything. So the, the, the problem is with They them. should be paid. They are paid more than they are paid well. Mm. You can employ some, your own aides. Mm. Parliament should facilitate you to do your job. Oh. Parliament. Parliamentary staff, researchers, and so on and so forth should beef up your work. Mm. That is how it is done. But you are personal security whom you, whom you send for your, 
go and bring my girlfriend there as you end the supermarket. That is useless. <laughs> and that's the problem we're having in this yeah. So I cannot blame Ruto. It's yeah. a Kenyan problem. And that's and that's how, just how it is right yes. as of now. When we come back, we look at what professor would rather whom professor would rather gamble with and would you rather this is understanding politics. Prof, it's sports day. Uh, would you rather have Simba Arati or Silvanas Osoro to be your boxing coach? Man, uh, that is Simba Arati. Why are you asking such an obvious question? Uh, uh, Simba Arati for you. Yeah. You feel like he has the... Ah, oh, he's like a karateka and what? Okay. Um, I'm asking Munya or Moses Kuria to lead your chess team. My chess team? Yes, chess. Game Kuria. of mind. Kuria. Uh, you think he's... Ah, oh, yeah. Kuria, Kuria. You see how he's playing politics there? On the mountain now. He said he won't buy. Oh, you see. He's, he knows what he's going to do. He knows what he's doing. That oh. seed is living for Moho, I think. Uh, Moho? Yes. <laughs> Professor <laughs> Gladys Bosholeo or Gladys Wanga CS Sports? CS Pet? Yes. I think Wanga is more, more serious. Better than uh, Sholei? Uh, Sholei is a pish and she pretends as if she knows everything. Uh, but she's good. And that's what you feel. But not as good. Wanga is practical, oh. very pragmatic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She knows the ground. Yes. yes. Okay, well, th that's it from us, Understanding Politics here with Professor Herman Manyura. Thank you so much for making time and the conversation. If you feel this conversation has been helpful to you or quite impactful, you can go ahead and share, like, comment, or even go ahead and subscribe if you haven't. Until we have these conversations again, have yourselves a lovely rest of your day.